Apex Legends is jam-packed with a ton of different settings that would either boost your performance or bring it crashing to the ground. Today, I'll be going over the in-game settings you need to change, the PC settings you need to change, along with my recommendations for your key bindings and other general settings. So without further ado, let's get into these settings. So the first step is we're gonna change some things on your PC. We're gonna be going over to the search settings and you're gonna type in mouse. We're gonna navigate to mouse settings. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go to additional mouse options. Here in additional mouse options, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into pointer options. And here you're gonna wanna make sure that this select pointer speed is on the sixth notch. And you're gonna wanna turn off enhanced pointer precision. This essentially makes it so that your mouse is gonna move exactly where you want it to. And it'll be the same every single time. And it essentially turns off mouse acceleration here by default so it will feel a little bit bad at first but it will be worth it in the long run because when you practice you'll actually be practicing what you're supposed to wherever you're at on the screen we're going to click off of this save your options apply okay next settings we're going to be changing is actually in your apex files so we're going to be going over to file explorer going over to local disk we're going to users we're going to whatever your profile name is and we'll be going to save games once we're in save games we're going to go respawn apex and local here in local we're going to go over to the video config.txt essentially what we're going to do here is a couple things the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look for this setting called the settings.r lod switch scale and this essentially is the value at which things render in in the game there's more that goes into it that's basically what it means by default it's 0.6 but i'm going to switch it to 0.3 now if your game looks too bad for you you can always switch this back up but this will help a little bit but you don't have to change this up if you don't want to now going down this is a really important one we'll be going over to the settings.csm enable this is essentially shadows so you don't really need shadows in this game and it just takes up a lot of space on your graphics and it can really mess up your settings if you want the most frame rate possible so here we're just going to leave that at zero and i can't trust enough that that's really what you want so after you change all of that you're going to save by going to file and save and then you're going to go and right click this video config.txt we're going to go over to properties and we're going to switch it to read only essentially what this means is that this is going to force these settings to always happen upon boot up and it can't be changed from in game so if you ever want to change settings you can change it from within apex after you unclick the read only option and you can come back in here and you could hit read only again and it will force those op options no matter what it could be kind of finicky to deal with but it's really up to you but this forces it so you will have the same settings every time so it's very useful next one we're going over is exclusive for nvidia users so if you have an nvidia graphics card you're going to want to navigate over to your nvidia settings so here in the nvidia control panel you're going to want to do a couple things but the biggest one being going to manage 3d settings then from here going to your programs so you're going to select apex legends so the r5 apex.exe you're going to want to copy the exact settings that I have down. So you're going to want to have XXAA for anti-aliasing on off, on, off. It's going to be none, off. And then for the background applications max frame rate, you're going to have off. You're going to have CUDA GPUs as all latency mode on, max frame rate off, multi-frame sampling AA off. You're going to select, just say, select your graphics card here. For the power management mode, you're going to prefer maximum performance. For the refresh rate, you're going to select the highest available. Texture filtering, you're going to have on negative LOD bias. You're going to have allow quality, high performance, trilinear optimization on, threaded optimization on, triple buffering off, vertical sync on. And you're going to basically turn off vertical sync once you're in Apex itself. And for the virtual reality pre-render frames, you're going to use global settings, which for me, I have it as one. The next thing you want to go to is the change resolutions tab, and you're going to select your primary monitor. And here you're going to make sure that you're, and here you're going to want to make sure that your monitor is using the proper resolution. And it's also using the proper refresh rate. Sometimes this will be lower than it actually is, but you're going to want to make sure that it's the highest refresh rate. And then for the color settings, this is just what I have RGB full 8 BPC and the highest 32 bit. This is really up to you. That's going to be it for the NVIDIA control panel. So now we're going to be going over the in-game settings. The interact prompt styles, there's really one big difference between compact and default, and that is the amount of text that shows up on the attachments and guns on the ground. With compact, it doesn't show a lot, and with default, it shows everything. So it, it can help you explain kind of what it all does and what everything is. So if you're a newer player, you might want that enabled, but if you're a more experienced player, I would suggest you leaving it on compact so you can see better. Next is button hints, and all this really does is show the buttons that require for certain abilities like for my valkyrie q it's just going to say that it is q 
So you can kind of see what my bindings are, and because of this, you can also see that I'm on PC, so I tend to leave it on. Next is for the crosshair damage feedback, and all that basically means is that whenever you shoot a target, it's that inner crosshair that shows inside when I hit fire here, or when you aim down sight. I tend to leave this on because it kind of helps me track targets when I'm shooting at them and it's pretty good but you can really switch that to whatever you want. The next setting is going to be damage numbers. For damage numbers there's really a couple different styles. There's off, there's stacking, there's floating, and there's both. Now stacking all that means is that the damage numbers will combine into one number for all the combined damage. When it comes to floating it'll be the individual damage numbers just each by one so it's kind of okay it's not really the best and then there's both. So you have a combined number and then sometimes it'll show the individual bullet spread there which is okay some people do that at both i like to have mine on stacking that's just my opinion now when it comes to ping opacity i have this on faded so when i when i ping you see how it's kind of clear there it helps it so it doesn't obscure when i'm aiming down sights at targets next is going to be obituaries and all this is is a kill counter on the upper right hand side of your screen i'll leave that on for more information minimap rotation you can have this on or off whatever you want it's personal preference weapon auto cycle i have that off auto sprint I have that on. When you're on mouse and keyboard, you probably shouldn't have this on, but I by default have a macro that I set so my shift is also my walk key. So it really helps me out. It's just one less button to press when I'm doing things like tap strafing and everything. So I like doing it that way, but you don't have to. But if you're on controller, it's almost a must to have it on. Double tap to sprint, I have this on off. Jetpack control, I have it on hold. So I just hold it and I can just go back and forth and it's a lot easier to hit. And instead of having to press the button multiple times to turn it off and on, it's just one and it's super nice. Incoming damage feedback. This is personal preference. I'm all for 2D and 3D. That's what I prefer. This is a must. You should turn off taking damage closest death boxes or crafting menus. Essentially what this setting does is so it makes it much easier to armor swap. Because normally if you're inside a box and you're trying to take someone's armor to apply it to yourself, if someone were to shoot you, it would close out that menu entirely. And so this way it doesn't and you're actually able to armor swap without getting pushed out so it's a must if you want to get really good at the game and get to higher levels armor swapping is a very much needed thing the hop up pop up ui element i have this on off streamer mode i have this on off you could have it on or killers only whatever you want to do it's up to you there's anonymous mode for all you sussy people who want to be anonymous i guess next is usage sharing and all this basically means that ea if they collect data or not i have that on disabled performance display i have this on on so i can see all the details that i want to upper right hand side of my screen Screen for packet loss, for ping, and for FPS as well. Next one's going to be club invites. I have this on enabled, so why not? You might have it on disabled. It really depends on what you want to do. Communication filter. I have this on everybody, but you can switch it to friends only or a nobody at all. So if you're getting tired of people in game chat, you can toggle that off. Then reticle, you can have it on default, or you could have it on custom. A bunch of different ones to choose from. I have that on custom and default. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. Colorblind mode. I used to run Trinopia colorblind mode, but I just have it on off now. It's really up to you and what your personal preference is. So now we're going to be going over the video settings. For display mode, you want this to be full screen at all times. If you want the best response time for your monitor to your equipment, then you want this to be on full screen and also to avoid tearing. Some people like it on windowed and borderless window so because the, they tab out all the time but please keep it on full screen if you want the best performance possible for aspect ratio and resolution this is really monitor dependent but usually the native resolution is what you really want to have unless you're planning on running stretch res which if you want to do that you can look up a video on how to play stretch res i personally don't but it's really up to you for brightness play whatever is good with your monitor Certain monitors have different brightness levels and it looks better depending on what your monitor actually looks like. I keep mine on my default 50 because I've adjusted my monitor accordingly to what it says I should and what looks best for my view personally. For field of view, there's really a bunch of ways that you can do this. By default, it comes in at 90, which to show you is like this, which is pretty zoomed in. And then uh, what I play at is here at 110 is a lot more zoomed out. Essentially what you're gonna to wanna to do is I recommend playing at the highest possible one that you can. So 110 being one of the best, but some controller players find it better to play on 104 or at 100, or for your, for instance, if you're Shiv, he plays at 90 still, which is kind of crazy to me. And the biggest benefit to that being is that everything's a lot closer in and targets are better and it's easier to see things at distance, but also kind of at close range. But the downside being that you can't really see things in your peripheral vision. And you just have much better clarity when this is at 110. So I recommend playing at 110 if you can. For FOV ability scaling, all this basically means... So if you're playing a character like Octane and you stim shot, your FOV will actually increase 
and then also decrease over time. So as you see, when I pop the stim, it goes out, and as the time decreases on the stim, it goes in. This really throws off aiming, especially when you aim down sight. When you pop a stim, you see it zoomed in, and now it's zooming out again. That's super frustrating to me, honestly. And it also changes your sensitivity as well. So it just really throws you off. And I don't recommend using this at all, but it's up to you. I just don't think you should. When it comes to sprint view shake, all that basically is is if your character shakes at all when they're running. I recommend it to be minimal because I don't like shaking. Next is going to be virtual sync. I have this on disabled. Now, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, I recommend having this on and on enabled plus boost. This essentially just reduces the system latency between all the components together, and it's a really good time. Now, for adaptive resolution FPS target, all this does is that it dynamically changes your settings during game, which can really mess up with your consistent FPS, especially if you don't already have an FPS limiter on, and it can really mess you up. I don't recommend using that, so I leave that at zero. That's the super sampling, that's disabled, that's not even on. anti alias lean. This is really up to you. It's just basically the detail on edges farther off. You can have it on or off. If you have it on, it'll take a slight decrease in your frame rate, but you'll be able to see things better at a farther range. For texture streaming budget, you can have this as high or as low as you want to, but this is just the overall clarity and view of the game. Design my content, I want this to be a little bit higher so I can see things better and so you guys can enjoy a game that doesn't look like an absolute potato. So here for texture filtering, I have that on um, bilinear. You can go higher or you could go lower. It just depends on your graphics card and how much frames you actually want. For ambient inclusion quality, I have this on disabled. Sun shadow coverage low, sun shadow detail low. Uh, spot shadow detail I have on disabled. All metric lighting disabled. Dynamic spot shadows I have on disabled. You can have this on enabled if you want to. All that basically means is whether or not legends have shadows in the pre-game menu. So you can have that on, it doesn't really matter. Model detail, Avis on low, but you can have this on high if you want to, or on medium. It's just how clean the characters look, and if you don't know what characters look like, it might help you spot more details, so you can identify them more. Effect details, low, impact marks, low, and ragdolls are on low. You want impact marks to not be on disabled, because you do want to be able to see them. If something shoots you, so you can see what direction they're shooting at you from, by impact marks on walls and grenades and just things like that. And next for audio. For audio, master volume, it's up to you. Just make sure you have your mic in here. Push to talk or open mic, it's up to you. But if you have a terrible mic, there's stuff happening in the background all the time, please don't have it on open mic. It's super annoying. Next is going to be the open mic threshold. That's just a value of what's if it's more sensitive or not. So that's really up to you and what you want to have happen. The incoming voice chat volume is just how much here. So you can lower that down if you want to. Next is going to be the for the sound effects, detail, the dialogue, the music, and the lobby music. I don't have music on. I don't really want it. So I have it off. I usually have my own in the background anyways for dialogue volume this is important for callouts that your characters automatically make now there's a lot that are completely useless you might not want to hear but there might be some like the characters calming when a third party comes and starts shooting at you. so you want that on so you can at least hear it so you can take action for it now when it comes to sound effects volume this is literally everything else this just needs to be higher than the dialogue volume if i have it at 60 or if i have it at 100 it doesn't really matter too much just because i just adjust it here on my uh controller for how loud my game is in general so i mean as long as it's at a decent ratio it works now when it comes to sound and background all this basically means is that if you have your game exit out and you're tabbed out and you're let's say on youtube or you're looking something up it allows you to hear the game still so if you're about to drop in the ship you can come back into the tab because you hear it so you don't have to keep on asking your teammates hey are we dropping you can just hear it. next two is just off and off it's personal preference it's not really important so finally, we'll be going over the mouse and keyboard settings. First tip that you're going to want to do is to calculate your eDPI to see if your sensitivity is too low or it is too high. Easiest way to do this is to take your in-game mouse sensitivity to times it by your DPI, which can be found usually in your mouse settings, whatever program you're using. So for me, I have 750 DPI and I have a 1.8, which essentially means that if I times those two by each other, I get 1,350. Now the eDPI range that you want to shoot for is anywhere in between 800 and 1600 eDPI. But if you want more of a sweet spot and more exact calculation, anywhere between 900 and 1400 eDPI is really going to be the good sweet spot. But if you go anywhere outside of the 800 and 1600 eDPI range, you either be really slow on the sensitivity scaling or you'd be way too high. Now, there's always outliers to this on the pro scene, but I just recommend having a sensitivity within that range and sticking to it when you play. Now for the ADS mouse sensitivity, usually this is kept on one. I have mine a 1.3 and on 
honestly, I don't know how it got there. It just kind of was there one day, so I haven't really changed it. I probably should change it back, but I'm too scared to at this point. And you could also change that sensitivity for all the optics in the game if you really wanted to. I haven't messed around with this though, so it's really personal preference and what you want to do. Here for this next three, there's mouse acceleration, which I recommend leaving that on off. If you want to be more consistent with your aim, leave this off. Some games by default automatically turn off mouse acceleration like Valorant, but there's other games that by default have it on and it can be really confusing. So just have it off. You'll become a much more consistent player and accurate player. Next is going to be mouse invert, which probably isn't a good idea unless you're just a psychopath who aims backwards and is nuts. So I wouldn't recommend that. But if you do, then hey, all the props to you. You're one of the few, I guess. Next is for lighting effects. Just leave this off. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. Now, when it comes to all my keybinds, I have W for forward, obviously, but I also have scroll wheel up or tap strafes and for movements. And if you actually want to see a movement guide here in the future, just let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to do so. Movement is normal for jump. I have that on scroll wheel down in space bar. For crouch, I have mine on hold on left control. For my tactical ability, I have this on Q. My ultimate ability, I have that set to my mouse. My interact pickup is E. My alternate interact is X. My inventory is tab and I. My map is M. Toggle fire is B. I mean, I have hold for my aim if you really care. My melee, I have set to F, reload R. I have mine set to weapon cycle on one. So instead of having to hit one or two, I usually just hit one and it just cycles to the next weapon, which is pretty nice, but you can do whatever you want to with these three's personal preference. Holster is still on three for me. Grenade is G. I have that little squiggly line for my survival item instead of alt, because I like to spam alt for my interact because I'm a sucker for it, apparently. My selected health item is Z. So I use a scroll wheel and then you can set all these here to use certain healing supplies. So if you really wanted to, you could select something on your mouse to always use shield batteries. So you can always just hit a button and it'll automatically pop a shield battery. So you don't have to navigate through the window. That's something you really want to use. Character utility action, H doesn't really matter. Interact weapon, I have on left all. My email F1, I don't really use it. And I have ping set to my mouse as well. And my push to talk is V. And so that really does it for these settings. If you're on controller, I'm sorry. I'm not a controller player. I don't really know what to do with this. So maybe look up another video to figure out what controller settings would be best. That should be it. I hope that you learned something useful and that from this video, you'll be one step closer to whatever goal you have in mind. See ya.